The diagram shows a wheel of circumference 0.3 meters and the rope is hanging on one end to a force meter, which is right here. And the rope passes over a wheel and hangs a, a, supports a freely hanging load that is quite heavy, 100 newtons. So this wheel is actually being turned by an electric motor at a constant rate, 50 revolutions per second. Each second, turn. So when the wheel is turning at this rate, your force meter will have some kind of reading. Now, a reminder that this one looks like a pulley system, but it's not a pulley system because it's not frictionless. This motor is turning to help pull up this thing. So if you ask me, if here is 100, will the reading here be 100? Ah, no, you see only 20 because this motor is help exerting a force to pull in this direction. So I'm going to write that the very first thing. This motor exerts some kind of force, F helping to lift up the load, which is quite heavy because the load got uh, M the weight, uh, very heavy, right? Mg. Uh, so let's write that down here. What do they want us to find first? Uh, wait, uh. What is the output power of the motor if we want this system to work the way it is? So power, let's first thing think about power here. We don't really have much information about energy. Yeah, not that much. We didn't see how... Hmm, okay, so one of the, sh the the shorter ways we can do this is to think of power. If you want to find power of motor, you need to know what is the force that the motor exerted on that rope and how fast is it rotating or moving at that time. Okay, with that, let's look at the thing. The important clue here is the force meter will read 20 newton. The force meter is not going to read 100 newton. It's going to be much lesser. So if I say I take this rope and I straighten it out into a straight line, I think I'll draw it here. Yeah, something like that. Okay, on the left side, this left side, who is pulling the string? The Newton meter. Inside the Newton meter, Newton meter say, okay, I pull you down. Newton meter is a, has a spring inside there. So this is the force due to the Newton meter. So I'm going to call this force of the meter which is, what's the thing, 20 newton to that direction. On the other end, who is pulling this string? The load is pulling down the string on this side. So in the opposite direction, so I'm going to say, oh, there's another force here in this direction, opposite, and this one is the load, 100 newton. Then there is one more to add in. How about this wheel, the motor that is pulling, pulling, pulling? So it's kind of distributed along the whole rope. But let's just say that this uh, wheel is pulling in this direction at some force F. Do know what is this force? So how to find what is the, the force there? You can write it out. What's pointing to the left versus what's pointing to the right? Because this one, we already straightened out the string. If you want to think of it in this way, also can. But your brain have to twist around a bit. So what's pulling it down to the left or towards the Newton meter is 20 and this force by the motor. In the opposite direction, pulling it down clockwise is this load. Or you could say it pulls it to the right. So this one is the load, which is 100. So what's the force of the motor? So the force of the motor that is exerted on the, the string throughout this whole rotation is going to be 100 minus 20, which will give us 80 newtons. Ah, so now we know this force of motor is going to exert 80 newtons. Check, we found the motor force. Next thing is velocity. If you imagine a point on this wheel, let's say this point that I draw, it's going to be moving at a certain speed because of the rotation. Question is, what is the speed? How to find the speed? I think the hint lies in this 50 revolution per second. So here's what we can do. One revolution, how far does this thing travel? How was the distance in one revolution? Let's write it out. So in one revolution, which is per second, later we'll add that. In one revolution, you will travel... One revolution is how big? Huh? Oh, like this. One full cycle. So you need to ask, what's the circumference of the circle? All right, let's add that in. Circumference, 0 0.3. So in one cycle, you go one round, you would have traveled uh, 0 0.3 meters. Distance traveled in a circle, of course. Okay, one full circle.
like that. Okay, what if we have 50 revolutions? So in 50 revolutions, you have to times 50. Uh, this one will be, what, 0 0.3 times 50, yeah? 15 meters. Okay, that means 50 times I turn, I would have traveled 15 meters as a distance. But the last thing is, hmm, in one second, you rotate 50 times. Zzz, wait, how to do that? Uh? One, two, zzz, wow, very fast, very fast. Okay, so this motor is turning very fast per second. And if we divide this per second, that means in one second, you rotate 50 and you travel 15 meters per second. Now, this is great because now meters per second is what? This is our velocity. Or rather, I should say the speed. Ah, yeah, because this one is turning. It's a bit more pain. So this is the speed at which a certain point on the string is moving. This point moving in a tangential speed. Okay, I draw this one. Nah, speed. So let's do the final calculation. So the power of the motor, we know this power on average throughout the whole thing, we can't assume it's constant, is exerting 40, uh, 80 newtons of force on the rope. And the rope is moving at a tangential speed of 15 meters per second. And what do we get? Let's take the calculator, 80 times 15. That will give us 1200 zero, zero watts. All right. Let's look at the answer uh, in kilowatt. Uh, okay, so I 1, 2, 3. 1 1.2 times 10 to the 3 watt. And this 10 to the 3 is kilo. What? So that will be best choice would give me is B for this question. Okay, so make sure you can know how to use this one. P equals to FV. If you are wondering where the P equals FV from, you can derive it from other forms of the power equation. Go check out the theory videos for that. But I think that's all for this video. Hopefully that's helpful. Go digest it a little bit. If you have a different method you use to solve this question, please do share. Feel free to comment down below. But yeah, that's all. Bye-bye. See you in the next one.